Yes, <laughs> ready to go. Are you well? Yes, 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 of course. <laughs> good with with good that man. weather, to be honest. <laughs> um, start with the transfers, I suppose. Get that out of the way, early doors. You, yeah. you sort of spoke on after the game on Saturday that you were sort of hopeful of, of getting a couple more new faces in the building. Is there anything you can provide in terms of an update on whether you're close with, with anything? What, what have you got? What have you got? Uh, Jovan Cabral. Cabral. Um, no, look, the, 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 it, it is definitely an option we pursued, but the latest I heard is that um, at this moment in time, it's not something that seems to be uh, on the table, on the cards. But we'll see if, if, if possible, we're going to try and bring you know, good players to the club and see if we can strengthen the squad a little bit more. We've got our first busy period coming up and yeah, we'll, need, we'll need players who can, um, who can take over of each other. Isaac Davis was another one that I think it's been made public that you were, you were looking at from Cardiff. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, look, this, if, the problem is if, if, if really we go through the scouting list, it's quite extensive. The, the only thing is, like, not every deal is, is feasible. You know, we, we, there's, there's players where that are at clubs and you have to respect the fact they don't want to let them go. And then, you know, we're looking for... I suppose the smart opportunities and, and, and not necessarily to make a, um, how can I say, to, 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 make someone's tr to make someone's transfer, to make someone's summer, you know, it's not our goal. You mentioned a busy period and I think it's six games in 18 days from, from Watford <coughs> until the end of the month and obviously the transfer window as well with, with your spinning plates. How, how hard is that from your perspective to manage, obviously on the pitch, off the pitch, potential arrivals, etc.? Yeah, this, it's true. There's this two dynamics where you manage the now and then you manage a little bit the future because every transfer decision is a big decision for the future as well. But, um, you know, in general, you rely on your staff as well. We have a good, you know, we have a good scout recruitment system and we've got coaches who know exactly what we want to bring to the players. And then in my case, you know, I, um, I'm used, I've known nothing different than to have to juggle between those two, those two those two dynamics. I think 13 have, have left this, this summer now, since obviously with contracts and some, some player sales. Do you, would you like to think that's it in terms of players leaving the building or with the finances, is it a case that if there's, a, you know, if there's an acceptable offer made for a, say for a Josh Brownell or somebody like that, a core player, that it has to be considered? <laughs> yeah, but I'm like any other manager. I think at I, I, I two, I was like, okay, that's it, well done. <laughs> <laughs> than with 13 deep but um, I'm also like um, someone that sees you know for me the key thing is that we we, um, we first of all I think that it's, it's for me it's paramount that this club becomes again one of the healthiest clubs in England you know I, I, I do want to um, contribute to that and then competing on, on, on the back of that as well and therefore, you have to just allow some decisions to, to, to happen just to give a little bit of breathing space to the club as well. And then I think you can all see that I'm not saying that we've... I think it's too early to call it whether we've done all good business, but I think you can see that there's some players already who look interesting for the future and who we haven't got for any crazy money. I think any amounts I've heard in the, in the paper so far, it's probably half that, and that's what we really paid. And so we're doing... We, we're keeping it diligent, but as to any player now, any of the players that are playing right now, um, there's there's absolutely no no bargains to be made. You know, it's like they're paramount to us competing this season, and and you know, like every club says, you know, to us when we want to buy a player, you know, everybody's got a price, but yeah. we don't want to let him go. <laughs> yeah, and I guess that breathing space, you've financially speaking, you've. You've got a little bit of that with the business you've been able, to, the money you've been able yeah. to get for, yeah. for the likes of Dwight and Max and exactly. Opie, etc. Yeah. Um, onto the the injury situation. There was no Jay Rodriguez, no Scott Twine, and no Kevin Long involved last last week. Would you expect yeah. all three of those to be absent again on Friday? Um, look to to be clear on on, on this because uh, you've asked the question clearly as well. So. I mean, Longy and Twiney um, are not yet in contention for this weekend. And then J-Rod, um, we'll see, we'll monitor day by day. But the positive signs are that these players are no long-term injury. 
uh, except for Kevin, but but the, the two mentioned, Twiney and, and, and J-Rod, are not long-term injuries. So um, it's in the bigger picture, making sure we're not doing anything rash. One of the positives to come from last week was the impact Manuel Benson made off the bench. Um, how is he, do you sort of see him in a position to be able to play, obviously just in the building last week, but a week's worth of training under his belt, is he in a position where he's, he's in place to start if, if needed and how sort of pleased have you been with yeah. him? No, I think I think players like like Manu and you got to give him time as well to, to you know to be the player he can become, you know. But in general, what you could see is that game was looking like he was neutralizing itself a little bit in the first half. It wasn't there wasn't a lot of threat against us, but it was just what do you call it, stifling a little bit, stifling out. And and obviously when you got players like this, you know, having a one v one situation leaving him one-on-one -on -one is usually not enough. So the moment people start doubling up, that frees up another space. And we needed that in that game because he was a little bit, um, getting a little bit predictable in the first half. And then second half, it became one of them where, you know, unfortunately, we couldn't have 90 minutes like this, which would have seen maybe a different result. He's one of, I think, four players that have come from Belgium or with experience of the Belgium league. You've obviously got huge experience there as well. How easy is it to adapt to the championship is it how dramatically different is it if at all just give us your sort of thoughts on, on yeah the comparables. so I, I, I think in the recruitment this summer um, the, there's two big parameters to take into account is you know one I, I, I arrived here back end of June and usually when you prepare a, a transfer window you get a good 12 months to see all the plays and then you know everything you know you you know you know the dog's name if you know by the time you sign a player but when you have 13 going out of the door and you need to replace him with 13 or 15 um, the only way to to diminish the risk a little bit is by you know one having an independent recruitment process who like vets the players and then two making sure that um, there are a couple of names in there which you know you know at least a little bit of the background from because you can't know everybody background so this transfer window um, is, is why it's absolutely normal that there's a couple of familiar faces in there, in, in my case. But then you speak about the Belgium, and, and that's a coincidence. Belgium is one of the more physical leagues outside of England, and so there's a natural match and the affordability of players there, maybe not from the top-end team, so you can't go in the top six and shop, for example. It's difficult. We got Benson, but that's normally it doesn't happen because he got one year, one year left. Um, but the, the better players outside of the top six, they're still players who can perform in the championship and are used to a physical league, and that's the advantage, obviously. I wouldn't have been able to use that card if I was a manager in Holland or Spain, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, Matt Lighton will be available again yeah. this, this weekend, having obviously missed the first two games from a suspension last season. Just how big a boost is that, and is he a player that you could see competing with, with Connor Roberts for that, that sort of particular role in the side? I mean, look, you know, one thing's for sure is uh, Louts is an experienced experience player and as the, the age comes down a little bit in the group, those players become more valuable. But as to what Louts has to do for, uh, has, will be meaning for our squad, I mean, there's usually conversations I have very, very openly with, with my players. So, um, most players you can name in the team, I would like to think that they know exactly what I think and why, and, and, um, and, and with Louts it's the same. It, would you say that he's got, still got a, a future here and, under yourself, or is he a player that might end up moving for reasons that maybe doesn't quite fit what you're after, and also he'll probably want to play football given, given where he's at in his career? No, I mean, it's, for me the most important thing is I always have the conversation with the players first, you know? And, um, and when I had a conversation with Laut, and you know, I'm sure I can be transparent on this, for me the most, and I think as well with this being Burnley, I prefer that we just keep talking as straight as we can, you know. So I did speak to Laut, and um, he knows that his minutes would be limited here. But um, the way he's training and the way he's conducting himself around the training ground, you know, for me in the end, it's not about names or it's not about anything other than you know performance and and. And as long as a player is at the club, I just go with what I see. And, and, and he's, um, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's hungry and he's on a mission. And, and I like that side of it because anything I say, 
is is only true based on on what I see and 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 yeah, Louts is um is definitely on a on, in a, in a positive moment uh, right now. Just while we're speaking about right backs, just on the role Connor Roberts is is having when he sort of drops into the defensive three, um, it, what what from what we've seen in the first two games, how how important is he? in the system and, and how much of a learning curve has that been for him to perhaps play a little bit differently to, to how he might have done previously and particularly with his national team? Yeah, I, look, I think Connor, Connor, Connor has, has got a great football in education. I think he's been at clubs as well with different, different type of managers. It's not about one style is better than the other. It's just the fact that he's been exposed to so many good coaches in his career. So. Uh, he's a player that naturally has done more things than than what other fullbacks have done, and I, I don't think that anything I've asked him to do at this point has been uh, anywhere out of his comfort zone. It looks like he yeah, has done that before. Yeah, I understand exactly what what that means, and um, but he remains a player for us who um, who who does both sides of the game. So one is important for us in in having possession, but two. He, we know as well, like he did against Huddersfield, that he's important getting forward, and it's it's all about the timing of that. And he's a good understanding of it. He's, uh, he's a good kid. Last one from me. Watford on obviously on Friday. What do you expect from them? Are you on your are you on the guard for sixty yard shots from just inside uh, their half? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I'm gonna line myself up for one now again. But I would say usually it's good that it's out of the way. Um, <laughs> Surely not twice in a row. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm lining myself up for this one. But in, in reality, um, like Watford is one of these. If you compare, then actually, if we, if we then talk about teams who've gone down, you've got Burnley, Watford, Norwich. And if you look at the turnover of both squads, all three squads, sorry, clearly we're in a much more delicate situation where we're more... There's more room for error where we are because the amount of deals you have to make, you have to have the right profiles. We're all new. I'm new to the championship and everything that goes with it. And so Watford is still very much a team who's really geared up to go back to the Premier League and, and, and then try and, and, and stay in the Premier League. And, but again, it's, it, it is the type of challenge that is good to have at this stage. Or this. I, I, I wouldn't have it any different way. I prefer to go now to Watford. Um, and I think we've seen Luton, we've seen Huddersfield, two, champ, uh, two, two playoff teams. Now we go to Watford and we'll have a very good idea of where we are with the squad and, uh, and, then, and, then, and then we keep working. Lovely. Thanks very much. Thank you. All that Thank you. Thank you.